All right, guys. Uh, I remember before that um, I said that I was looking for some way to retain the handguard retainer and the gas tube without using the locking levers that come typically on them with AKs and stuff. Um, I had a few things in mind, and I finally did find something. I found these uh, heavy-duty push pins from a company in Ohio called Jurgens, uh, not the uh, lotion people, but um, they make these heavy-duty detent pins. And it was surprisingly not easy to find because I wanted them in metric so that they would very closely fit these parts since they're obviously done in metric. And uh, they were the only ones I could find that uh, made them in a variety of sizes and lengths uh, that weren't custom orders. A lot of the ones that I found, they said, yeah, we'll make it for you, but they're going to be custom orders and you have to order a thousand of them. And so obviously that wasn't going to work. Uh... Now, ordering from Jurgens isn't cheap either because they have a $50 minimum uh, purchase requirement. And uh, considering these are like, uh, you know, only six, seven dollars a piece, I had to buy quite, I bought a couple of them. I bought three of these, I bought three for the rear sight block, and I bought two some of uh, some other size. I forgot what just to experiment with. But um, this one, uh, fits perfectly in this handguard cap and it right there and it just goes in perfectly i will have to put a slight uh, angle here in the lathe so that this will push in all the way flush against this but i mean i could use it as is with no problem uh i also had planned to remove this ring and then face this off in the lathe so that the hole's gone and then it would just be a smooth head that I would put a dimple on and put a dimple on this side so I could use a push a butt or a bullet to push them in and out. However, I found when I after I've got these that this isn't a solid pin. They did the shaft, threaded it, and then put this head on. So when you take this ring off, you can see a, a gap in there where the threads are, which is kind of surprising considering uh, you know they say that these are heavy duty. You would I would just think it would be a s solid piece. But, so I may just take this ring off and end up leaving the larger head on it. I don't really like the larger head. It looks a little weird. But, um, I guess I could just, uh, knurl it. And maybe that'll make it look a little bigger. It does make it easier to grab, put your hand on it and pull it. But, uh, so we do have a solution for this. For the rear sight block, uh, the pins, uh, or an eight millimeter and it's a little too big for the rear sight block. Now I, th at first I thought, Oh, I'll just drill out the two holes on each side and then that'll be fine. There's plenty of meat there, but there's a curvature for the locking lever to go into that needs to be cut as well. So I'm thinking I'll just get an eight millimeter reamer, get everything squared up and then just set, put past the reamer all the way through. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure how well that's going to work though. <laughs> since there's not really anything that's going to guide the reamer, so I have to make sure that my setup is absolutely rigid. But I'm not going to worry about that one right now. I can always go back to using uh, threaded pins like I originally thought I may have to do with these. But anyway, so now we're going to get ready to uh, cut the barrel so that this pin can pass through and keep it uh, attached to the barrel without sliding forward and keep the handguards tight. So to do that, I've marked some dicum on the barrel here, and then with the handguards on, I slid the retainer on, and then made sure it was all tight and pressed against, uh, pressed as far back as it'll go, and then through the little windows here, oh, and I dropped that. I tell you every time I drop something. Anyway, so through that hole took my carbide little scriber and scribed on both sides. So now, with that off, you can see, hopefully here, uh, little marks here and here. And so that tells me where the material needs to be removed. Uh, a lot of people use an end mill uh, to remove that. My mill is all in pieces. I'm sure you've seen it in the background a couple times. 
Uh, I'm still fixing it up and uh, getting the 60 years worth of crap off of it since it, ne it was never cleaned in its entire life. But um, so the other thing we can do, and the way I actually prefer because it's way more control, it seems, is to use a chainsaw file and file that notch in. And so I'll show you how to do that here next. Okay, so we got the barrel in the vise. I've once again put a uh, level on the rear sight block to make sure that it is not canted heavily in the vise. So while I'm taking strokes off of the barrel, it should uh, be pretty straight, as long as I do my part, obviously. Uh, now, the chainsaw files I use are just these ones from Harbor Freight really inexpensive uh, and they come in multiple sizes and I just pick the one that most closely fits the uh, retainer that I'm using so in this case this one fits really well and so now what we're gonna do is see our two marks make sure we're aligned with it we're not canted either way like this but we're right over the top and take a swipe. At first, you it may like s slide around a little bit. That's fine. All you're doing is making scratches there. That'll go away when we refinish. And honestly, I think I could use stand to get some new ones of these. I have done a lot of handguard retainer slots with these files, and they may be past their uh, use by okay there we go now we got a nice groove going Oop, and I just slipped Every now and then, clean off the file. Okay. And this is, I mean, going to take a little bit. Big thing to remember is to make sure your file is level as well. You're not going, this is obviously extremely exaggerated, but you're not going that way or that way because then your handguard retainer is going to want to cockeye. So keep it straight. Basically we're just going to keep doing that until our marks we made are gone. That should That is a good indicator that you're as uh, far as you can go or as far as you should go and that you're at the correct depth. But when we get closer to that point we're going to uh, constantly we're gonna take a couple swipes put it back on fit and see where it's at put a couple swipes because throughout this process you can adjust as you're going put a little more pressure on one side or the other to uh, move it back or move it forward as you go and we're good. We're good. I'll bring it around here so you can see what the notch is looking like. Okay, so there's the notch as it so far. You can see the marks where that we made with through the little window in our handguard retainer. Um, so we're getting down there. Doing it this way with the uh, chainsaw file, they look extremely factory. If you're doing this like on an AKM barrel or something, they look very factory done. So if you don't have a mill, you don't need to sweat it if you're ever like pressing a virgin barrel or something. You can just do it this way. I know people who like to, uh, uh, what is it, use drill bits and stuff to they'll put it on, set it up in a drill press and drill it or even in a hand drill. Though when I've seen the results of some of those, they look really uh, nasty. They just, they don't look like they're very well done. 
they don't have this smooth grain appearance and the smooth walls that factory ones have so I don't really I don't I don't think I've ever used that method actually I've always done this And that's a thing too, if you're going to uh, embark on doing something like this, you really need to make sure you have your filing technique down. Um, there's videos on how to do that on proper filing technique. Uh, there, like one, make sure it has a handle that is uh, not only safety, but it, whoop, not only a safety issue, but it's also for control. I like to point my finger in the direction I'm going, like put it on the file and then use your other hand on the other side to guide it and just feel for it. You can feel it rock and where it's centered right here and then do that. And not and don't push forward and push back like this. That's how you dull files a lot quicker. It's just easier and best to just push and lift, push and lift. Okay, so we're getting there. Here's our pin. You can see it fits that notch pretty well. Still have a little ways to go, so it's not fully at depth yet, but. And then every now and then I like to stop, I'll look down at the muzzle end or the uh, rear sight block end and look straight down at it to see if it's uh, uh, canted left or right from the shooter perspective. Because if it is, you can adjust. If it's slightly canted this way, you can just file downward a little bit more or vice versa. That's going to be good. Also, you can tell when you, that you're not uh, tipping, you're you're being very consistent in your swipes by looking at the grain of the cut. If you see that it's all uniform, going in the same direction, no shadows or anything, then that's that means you're going straight and you're level with your original cut. It doesn't mean you're level to the work. It just means that your cut is being consistent. Now, if you happen to dip a little bit and you cut, you would see the end down here on that end shinier than the rest of it or you'll see a shadow created by it. And that's how you know that you're uh, tipping your file. Okay, I think we'll start uh, test fitting and then taking a couple swipes, test fitting, taking a couple swipes, and I'll get back to you when it's done. You're pretty sure you got the idea from the, at this point. So we'll come back to it. Okay. Uh, that's it. It is uh, filed. It's pressed up against it. Here we have a pin and it presses in with a nice, uh, it takes a little bit of force. Not, I mean, not much. It's just finger force, but just enough uh, resistance on it. And the hand guards are tight and they're not going anywhere, moving inward or outward. So these, uh, this part is done think it'll work out really well especially take this off uh, it's definitely enough to just where it can just be pushed push it with my fingers so I think it's gonna work out pretty well all right next one we have to do with this is the rear sight block and that should be it for uh, getting these pins on I still do want to reduce it a little bit but I don't know it, it may actually be better this way for all I know at this point but we'll find out as we get closer to the end. So, on to the next thing.